Hey guys, Matthew here. In this video, I'm going to be showcasing one of my league starter builds for the upcoming 3.16 Scourge League, and that is a Seismic Trap, or at least a uh, physical trapper. So we're going to be clearing with Exsanguinate on our boots. We have a level 20 Exsanguinate there, and doing the bossing with Seismic Trap on a Tabula, which doesn't have any corruption. Now this gear is about as cheap as it really gets. It's extremely, extremely budget. Uh, because the reason for that is a lot of people have been telling me like, oh my god, I'm kind of scared of starting with a physical uh, trapper build because cold iron points might be really expensive, right? Well, here's the thing. You actually don't need cold iron points at all. Sure, they're nice, and there's a lot of things that are nice for this build to boost the damage, but it is not at all needed. As you can see right now, I'm going to be showcasing this with plus one, uh, plus one wands alongside uh, two other stats, which is this one has spell damage and crit multi, and this one has spell damage and critical strike chance of spells. Now, this build is not at all min-max. Matter of fact, I have some gems that aren't even leveled, uh, and my tree is a mess. And the reason for that is just a build that I threw together very quickly, just to kind of showcase what this build looks like. After that, we're going to head into uh, over to the updated POB, and I'll talk about the leveling and all that good stuff in terms of the options and, and uh, for gearing and whatnot. But I want to quickly showcase what it looks like, so we're going to head over to a T16 Minotaur map. Now, this is a T16 with a Awakening Level 7, as well as Guardian's Aid and Maven Influence. So there's quite a bit of stuff going on there, which means that technically this is a pretty endgame map. No, it's not like the Feared Encounter or anything like that, but you should not expect a build that would cost less than a single Exalt to be able to do so. Uh, so again, let's go ahead and jump into the showcase. We're going to clear with Exsanguinate. So the way that this build works is it's super, super comfy. You basically just throw down your traps and you just kind of walk and your traps trigger and everything dies. Um, you know, even in a pseudo five link in some one C boots, this, this exsanguinate skill is so good at clearing. It just doesn't really care. Uh, and, you know, it would do the same thing in, in a delirium map. It would do the same thing. It just has so much clear because of the, the amount of, uh, projectiles that it throws. It throws, I believe, up to nine projectiles or something like that. And then you throw in a chain, uh, chain support on that and adds like two chains. So you kind of end up with some something like 27 uh, chains on the build. And that basically means that every single projectile can hit like seven different enemies, at, or sorry, four, three or four different enemies at once. Can't do math right now. Uh, so you end up with having a build that can clear things extremely easily. As you can see, I can play this build with a single, single hand. I don't even need to hit my flask. I just kind of walk around, throw my, uh, throw my traps. There's no detonation going on on like a miner. So it is a very, very comfy playstyle. That is probably one of the biggest advantages of this build. Now the disadvantage is that damage wise, it's not exactly as good as something like the Eye of Winter Miner that I showcased earlier. And it's not exactly as good as the Reap Miner or the General Pry. And the ceiling for damage, even with cold iron points, it doesn't get crazy, crazy high. But as I've showcased in a couple videos uh, using Seismic Trap on my YouTube channel, doing the feared with extremely budget gear, it can do the feared uh, and it can do it relatively easily. Uh, but it's not going to be the sort of crazy, crazy damage that you can get on some other options. Now, one thing is I don't have a portal, so that's a bit of a mistake. Let me go ahead and backtrack until I find a portal gem or sorry, a portal scroll, because I totally forgot to bring along a portal. Uh, so hopefully this guy drops me a portal. Now that kind of sucks. I had to walk all the way back. Okay, not too bad. Uh, so we're going to put a portal down right before the boss. Uh, one thing to note is you will be able to put a portal or, or cast on death portal on your build. Right now, the thing is I have a bunch of empty sockets. Uh, again, I put this together really, really quickly. So with Jared's single target, we're going to put, in, uh, put down our Arcanist Brand and our Bear Trap and then just spam our Seismic Traps. So Arcanist Brand is going to be proccing Assassin's Mark. This build doesn't have too, too much crit, so this is a really good way to get uh, to get a lot of crit. And then Frost Bomb. Now we are a pure physical build, which means that Frost Bomb doesn't do any damage. So the exposure is actually completely useless, but we can still get the reduced energy, or sorry, the reduced uh, life regeneration rate, even if it doesn't hit or do, and do damage. Uh, so that's kind of why we're using that. And this is also the way that we're going to get Culling Strike on the build. Uh, so that is basically to cover the regen from Maven whenever she decides to do that. Uh, I'll talk about all of that later on we, when we head over to the build portion of the video. 
For now, let's go ahead and focus on this guy. So the way that we're going to do it is we're going to let him burrow. And then when he spawns, we're going to put in our debuff just need and kind of just let our back. trap rip away. Uh, so again, it's not as much damage as some of the other builds that I'll be no showcasing and making build guides off of. Uh, but it is very, very, you know, pr pretty good. Uh, like, honestly, it's not bad at all. So yes, one of them is dead right now. Possible. Now we have to deal That's with true. the other one. That's and boom, alive. he's dead. And that is a physical trapper. Cold iron points? No. Good double, good plus two trap of mine tabula or some skin of lords or loyal or anything like that. No, culling gloves, no, nothing, literally nothing, and the damage is absolutely ridiculous. It's a very, very nice build when you let it ramp up with the seismic trap, and I'll talk about that uh, in a second here. So now that we've uh, looked at what the build looks like in-game, let's go ahead and jump into the updated POB. So, updated POB, as always, when I make build guides, uh, you will see multiple different trees at the bottom here. I'm trying to showcase that. Uh, uh, so you've got, you know, your Brutus tree, you've got, you know, all, oops, my bad. You've got all the other trees all the way up to basically level 75. Uh, so Blood Aqueducts is the last tree that is going to be an elemental tree. And then after that, level 75 or around there is when we're going to be swapping over to a pure physical version of the build. Uh, so the tree is going to change a little bit. You'll see that the beginning, you'll have the respec out of that to instead go through the physical stuff, grab all the fizz all of that and then level 90 essentially the only thing that changes from the level 75 tree is the additional of a couple clusters we've got a large cluster uh it's extremely extremely easy to roll these clusters you're just gonna have to throw a few jagged fossils i believe the odds of getting these three notables or, or any three notables is something like 20 jagged fossils so we're looking at about 20 chaos there maybe 30 40 chaos whatever on top of the base being extremely cheap because the, the cool thing about these is that they're all, I believe, item level one notables. So very cheap to get the cluster jewels on this build. And the uh, small or medium clusters is going to be Guerrilla, uh, Guerrilla Tactics and Set and Forget. And just like the minor POB, it's kind of the same situation. The um, Trap and Mine clusters are just overall extremely cheap as bases with four or five uh, passives and then you add in guerrilla tactics and set and forget you can easily do this yourself uh, with some alterations and some regals i'm telling you these clusters cost absolutely nothing they're even cheaper if i remember correctly than the one that i use on the eye of winter and those ones are even cheap uh, so yeah that's kind of what the pob looks like uh, all the masteries are already set up uh, in terms of defenses we have positive chaos resistance uh, all res of course we're going to be capped out on res about 4.5k life, 18,000 evasion on the budget setup with 22 spell dodge. Now the spell dodge is really low and that's because the budget setup doesn't use uh, Adziri's step. Adziri's step is a massive, uh, massive amount of um, spell dodge on this build if we're talking about a budget setup anyways. Uh, but the very, very budget, I figured, you know what, let's go all the way budget and I put in deer stalkers and we're doing 1.4 million damage per seismic trap currently. And this is obviously on a tabula with no good corruption or anything like that. No quality on the gems, no awakened gems, no nothing like that. Very, very budget setup. 1.4 million. Now, if we go into the middle investment, which is where we're talking about a few exalts, right? Two cold iron points, uh, skin of loyal instead. This is also great for defenses. See how our, our evasion shot up to 20, uh, 28,000. So obviously skin of loyal is something that you do want to put a priority on getting. Uh, we are also getting a Ziri step. That's where our spell dodge is going to be coming from. So that's also really good. And in order to get the pseudo five link that we were getting from deer stalkers, we'll be getting it from the shaper gloves instead. Shaper gloves act as the exact same thing as the deer stalkers. They give you trap support. They can also give you trap and mine damage support. And in that case, what you would do is instead of using tra uh, trap and mine damage in your links, you would tr uh, use trap support in your link and trap and mine damage on your gloves. Uh, whatever you roll first or whatever you end up buying for cheap. So yeah, two cold iron points at this point. We don't have a helmet enchant. Skin loyal. Uh, we're going for Mark of the Shaper with an Elder Ring. This gives us 74%, and that's actually a really low roll uh, because you can actually use uh, Catalyst. You can use, I believe, uh, it is the really, really cheap Cashler Catalyst, and you can bring this spell damage up uh, from 74 to 88. Eight, and actually that's with a bad or a medium roll you can go all the way up to 96 
Uh, so as you can see, we are over 2 million damage. And the thing is, this is per trap, right? So the thing about Seismic Trap is you'll have up to four at a time and they will be lasting for a very long time, right? They last for many, many seconds. So you actually end up with having quite a few of these traps at a time because yes, realistically, you can only put four of these down at a time, but with advanced trap, you can actually, uh, you know, put another one and it doesn't replace the old one. The old one is still going to keep going and the new one is still going to keep going, right? So you can get probably about six of these down at a time uh, after a few seconds. Uh, so you're, you're looking at somewhere around 12 million DPS on this build. Uh, and they, it lasts for a very long time, right? So it's it's a very, very solid build, and you guys saw the single target DPS without uh, cold iron points or any of the juicy stuff. I basically showcase what looks uh, like it should be around 5.5 million DPS, and thinking about how it went against those bosses with Maven and all that, that's probably about the, the sort of DPS that I was getting out there. So very, very viable um, without the cold iron points or anything like that. Okay, otherwise, in terms of the notes, you'll find out exactly how to level this build. We are going to level up pretty much the exact same as any other trapper slash miner build. We level up with Stormblast Mines. Uh, eventually, around Act uh, 4, when we get Lab, we are if, uh, officially going to become a trapper build. And Act 4 in Crystal Veins, uh, at the waypoint, is when we go do our Lab. At that point, we're going to go ho over and uh, swap into Lightning Trap, multiple traps. And now this is the main thing, and normally I don't really talk about this, but this is the main thing about leveling this build, is that these traps here, uh, these trap with charges, there's actually many of them. There's not just seismic, there's also flamethrower trap, there's lightning spire trap, and they don't share charges. So what that means is that you can actually use multiple of them at the exact same time, and that is what we are going to be doing during the leveling to basically one-shot bosses. So we're going to be able to uh, use Lightning Trap in order to clear the map or the, the leveling zones. And then we're going to use a Seismic Trap with Lightning Spire Trap and Flamethrower Traps, all of them, all three at once, in order to really just blast through content until clear uh, the clearing the Strand in Act 6, because this is when you unlock Lily to be able to purchase any uh, gem in the game. And that is when we're going to be swapping into Exsanguinate. Now, we are still going to be an elemental build. Remember I said that you're going to be swapping to physical around level 75 or something like that? Uh, around the time, essentially, that you can get the Skitterbots Mastery, the Reservation Mastery here, and the Grace Mastery. Because the idea is that you want to run all these auras, and you can't, you're can't. you not going to be able to run Pride. Uh, so as long as you can't run Pride, there's no real reason to go with a physical version of the build. So around level 70, 75 is probably when we're going to be swapping over to the physical version. At that point, you're going to be dropping all of this, but you don't need me to tell you what you're going to be running because it's all in the skills portion of the build. So that's pretty much kind of what we're doing. In terms of the build, we are going to be, uh, you know, starting with Alira and we're going to respec into plus two, uh, plus two skill gems because, or sorry, plus two passives because it's a lot better than Alira for this build. It's really easy to cap out your resistances when you have access uh, to these sort of items. Uh, so that's kind of what we're going to be doing there. Uh, so again, POB is going to be in the uh, description of the video. Uh, pretty, pretty good build. I would say it's one that I think I may play, but I don't know. I'm looking at the Eye of Winter. It looks really good. I'm looking at this build. It looks really good. And the two other builds that I'm also going to be making videos about, which is General Cry and Reap Miner, they also look really good. So I don't know what to play. Everything just looks really, really solid as potential for a league starter. So anyways, before I go, as always, I want to say a huge, huge thank you to my supporters. So Cat, Alex, Brandon, Nate, the second Alex, Frame Scorpion, Neroth, Grimoire, the Great Master, Johnny, Thomas, Mass, Reese, Tim, Axel, Road to Millions, Atticus, Scott, Stan, Zerashi. Welcome back, Wolverine, Ronald, Kevin, and the third Alex, as well as, of course, Bitizen and Mercury, and everybody else who has supported me in the past, and everybody else who wishes to remain anonymous. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next guide. Peace.